Well, there are two things you shouldn't do in thunderstorms. One is play golf, and the other one's probably being on a boat. Hello. Well, I'm sailing again. This time I'm going from Brooklyn down to Smith's Creek, hopefully. Um, interesting day so far. It's meant to be 29 degrees, which is really hot. We've just had a shower of rain and the winds dropped to basically nothing. It's meant to be four or five knots. This is the entrance to the Hawkesbury, so the tidal flow through here is really strong. In fact, it's so strong, I was actually going backwards with this small amount of wind. So I had to motor for a bit. Now I think we're stationary or just slightly moving forward, maybe a knot. So I didn't tell you, this is actually a Friday, not a Wednesday. Yes, I know I've broken the rule of always going on a Wednesday, um, but Friday is pretty quiet as well. Well, the sun's come out again, and now we're sort of tootling along quite nicely. So relaxing being on the water. Gentle, gentle lapping of the water against the hull. It's only about three knots or four knots, but we're moving gently. Very peaceful. No storm predicted, but there are some interesting cumulus clouds up there. Well, it's a pelican. Well, as you can see, the wind's picked up, which was predicted for about two or three o'clock, and it's about that now. So uh, we're now going to run down towards Smith Creek. So this is basically where the Hawkesbury River joins the ocean. So there's an awful lot of water comes in and out at this point. And just here, it's quite shallow. So we've got the wind and the tide combining with a shallow depth. So it gets a little bit choppy, but it'll uh, even out in a minute. I know I probably sail most of the time in the same area. As far as sailing goes, it, it's fantastic. It's not ocean sailing, which obviously has a different appeal but there's still nice surroundings here. And it's only about an hour and a half north of Sydney. Sydney Harbour is really beautiful. There's no two ways about it. I used to race folk boats on the harbour a few years ago, actually many years ago now. And uh, it's great, but it does get very crowded. There's a lot of ferries going backwards and forwards. And you've, on a Saturday, you've got all the clubs racing and all the different classes. So it is very choppy. And you've really got to keep your wits about you. And especially going under the Harbour Bridge, because there's no wind there at all, it just dies completely. And that's the bottleneck where all the ferries come through. And a few years ago there was a collision and people died. And you've got sow and pigs, which is a, a big reef right in the middle, which you've got to avoid. We've nearly run aground on a few times. And there's about four islands. So, um, yeah, if you're gonna race, don't race on your boat, race on somebody else's. But this is only an hour and a half north of Sydney. No ferries, well, there's one ferry. And you're surrounded by hills, because it's all national park. Beautiful. I had to wet my hat, it's getting that hot. I did used to dinghy race as a kid with my father in England. Um, we used to sail on a lake called French and Ponds in Surrey. And we used to sail graduates, which were like a 10 foot timber dinghy. That's where you learn to get the most out of every little bit of wind, because sailing on lakes is often not a lot of wind. So it was, uh, it was interesting. But my dad was a fantastic sailor. He won quite a lot of prizes in state championships and national championships. But I think he instilled something into me about sailing. Well, I'm down Yeoman's Creek again. Yep, I didn't get to Smith's Creek, and that storm looked blacker and blacker. It's pretty black now. 
So I thought, well, there's a mooring over there. I'll go and grab the mooring. I'm moored next to my next boat. I think there's a few more dollars in that one. Yeah, there's money everywhere you look. This guy did say to me, nice boat. And I said, yeah, yours isn't bad either. He laughed. It's still really hot. It's probably still 28. Very muggy. Got the vegetable curry thawing out for dinner. There's my famous mooring protector. Stops bangs in the middle of the night and chipping paint. And I wanted a pennant style flag for Kate Louise. So it's a number eight pennant flag, which doubles up as St. George. I watched a video the other day on YouTube about this guy in a boat who got struck by lightning and it punched a hole in the fiberglass boat and then he started leaking where he was moored. So then he had to figure out in the dark where the leak was and try and patch it with plastic bags to stop the boat from sinking. And you sort of think, well, if lightning was going to strike, it would just hit the mast. But he managed to plug it and survive till the morning. Not the sort of sailing I want to do. Oh, just heard thunder. That's not good. You remember how I mentioned golf before and how it's just as frustrating as sailing with no wind? Well, there are two things you shouldn't do in thunderstorms. One is play golf and the other one's probably being on a boat. More rain's coming. Uh, it's started to rain, so I've put the tarp up. I normally tie it down a bit more securely than this. So it's a large tarp over the yard tied off all around the side to various points. Works really well. Well, the storm's passed. It's probably about six o'clock now. So I get a bit philosophical like Roger Barnes. I've had a few wines. There's something about just sitting in nature. It doesn't matter, it's raining. You spend too much time on the TV, on computers. When you're out here, you're just commuting with nature. It's beautiful. Now I'm in the Roger Barnes School of Sailing. Roger Barnes, as you may or may not know, has a YouTube channel and recently moved from England to France. He was probably the inspiration for me to get this boat. I wanted something small, traditional, timber. And in Australia, there just aren't that many to choose from. I looked at getting a Hartley 16, which is a timber boat with a small cabin and converting it into a gaff rig, but it wasn't really that practical. So I really lucked out with this Stornoway 18 made by Scruffy Marine. It is a kit boat, but you can have them made. I'd love to be in France visiting all those ports that Roger Barnes goes to. They look fantastic, picturesque, quaint, wine, croissant, sailing, what more could you ask for? But what we have here is nature and tranquility, and I think it's probably just as good. So Roger, thank you for your inspiration. Now I think I'm gonna have a my vegetable curry, uh, vegetable couscous, which looks very nice. So I've got my curry reheating in my galley box. Yeah, looks good. This really is fantastic, this little galley box. Thanks to uh, Roger Barnes who put me onto this and Arwen's Meanderings. Um, simple to make, holds a lot of food and it's very practical. So I'm all set up for the night. Got my air bed, sleeping bag and my new light, which is very good, I have to say. It's a USB chargeable light with five LEDs off eBay, pretty cheap. Gives a nice light, not too bright. Under the tarp, that's all you need. So I've decided to go without the mozzie net, which is a bit of a gamble because in Australia in summer, you get mozzies. Even on the water, away from the shore, they just seem to find you somehow. There's a bit of wind, hopefully that will keep them away. Here's hoping. Well, as you can see, it's pretty cloudy this morning. The wind did blow most of the night, but only gently. 
and it's already up. So it should be quite a good day sailing. Very quiet here. And this time I remembered the coffee and the cup. That's damn fine coffee. Scrambled egg. And wouldn't you know it, my gas is just about to run out. That's why you always bring a spare one. Because I'm hungry. They do last a long time though. It's a lot of fish jumping, so the seagulls are out. Well, we're off sailing again. It's probably about 10.30, I think. Nice, peaceful day. Arkatai, I think it is. It's a big aluminium boat, just taking my mooring. The guy on board was telling me that, because uh, aluminium boats are not that common, and that's a French design boat, and they broke their rudder, and they couldn't get anyone in Australia to manufacture an aluminium rudder, so they had to get it sent all the way out from France. That would have been expensive. A bit close to these rocks, I've just got to go around that mark. Sydney sandstone, they're all covered in oyster shells, you just don't want to touch them. Quite a few boats out today. Lion Island right in the distance. So if the wind stays in this direction, we'll try and get up that far. It's probably a good two hours to there, I'd say. Now we're sailing. So it's a bit different from yesterday when we had real trouble trying to get out against the tide. I think I mentioned before, that's West Head over there, and on the other side of that is Pitwater. And a lot of people sail up from Pitwater, where there are a lot of boats moored, around here for the weekend. That's the state sport and rec camp. School groups come and stay there. It's picking up a bit. Coming into Patonga. on a sort of broad reach, probably doing, I don't know, maybe five knots. Heading back from Katonga, sun's come out. Beautiful, mate. Probably gonna sail for about another half an hour then head back, because I'm pretty sure a southerly's gonna come. Gotta try and get over here before they get to that mark over there, the yellow mark. Should be able to because they're beating all the way up and I'm running down. <laughs> 